Alrighty, uh, <clears throat> one, one name that's come out today and it's been in the news and I thought, ah, uh, let's take a quick look at him. Jonathan Drouin. So is Drouin an elite talent? That's what he was drafted as. And this is one of those things where the guy's draft position, the guy's contract, all these things leads to a higher expectation. And I'm not sure that Drew ever reaches the level he was supposed to when he was drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning, third overall in 2013. We're now six years out from his draft year. And I have a belief that what you see with him is what you get. And, as, you know, to, to illustrate this, let's look at the top 10 draft picks from that draft. Number one, you have Nathan McKinnon, star player. It took him about four years in the NHL to really start to really break through, but once he did, star player. Barkov, one of the best two-way forwards in the game. Uh, number four, of course, right after him was Seth Jones, one of the best young defensemen in the game as well. Uh, Elias Lindholm had a solid breakout season in Calgary after some frustrations in Carolina. Um, Monaghan, also a flame, fantastic. They got the five and six draft picks from that draft. Smart, smart team. Um, and and Monahan's been excellent for Calgary. Uh, Darnell Nurse, big physical defenseman who's also capable of putting up some points in Edmonton. I think he's underrated because Edmonton's blue line gets so maligned that I, I don't think people realize how good Nurse can be. Ristolainen, of course, he's been in trade rumors. There's been talk about how poor his numbers were last year. Ristolainen's a decent enough point-producing defenseman, and I, I think that's about... That's about where, where he was supposed to be when he was drafted. Anyways, Bo Horvat has gradually got better every year. His totals keep coming up, and, and he it feels like he hasn't quite peaked yet. Uh, Valeri Nachushkin, of course, is trying to hold on to a job in the NHL. Uh, had a very rough season last year with Dallas, and now is trying to uh, catch on. And you get the feeling that if Nachushkin's not on an NHL roster in a week's time that he likely ends up going to the KHL. I, I don't know that the American Hockey League would be of any interest to him. So, that's his draft class. So where is Jonathan Drew at? Because I'll see, every now and then I'll see people saying, hey, he's still really young and he can still get it together. He could, yes. And, and for an example of that, I would look at Lindholm, who left Carolina, goes to Calgary, and bam, he's almost a point a game. But he had to be traded for it to happen. Drew has already been through a trade. So we'll go through his stats first. 2014-2015 as a rookie. So that's a year after his draft year. Part of the surprise with Drew was that he didn't stay with Tampa his his uh, his draft year. The 2013-2014, he got sent back to the queue. Uh, played 70 games in his rookie year. Four goals, 28 assists, 32 points. Played six games in the playoffs. He had an average ice time of 13 minutes and 14 seconds. So he's not playing a top-line role. You can forgive him for only having four goals because he's not playing a top six spot yet. He's only getting 13 minutes a game. 2015-2016 was a year of great tri tri uh, tribulation and turbulence for him. He only plays 21 games. He had injury issues and whatnot. Four goals, six assists, ten points, and he ends up being sent to the American League. We'll talk about that separately. We'll just look at the stats for now. 17 games in the playoffs once he came back up. Five goals, nine assists, 14 points. And thanks to that playoffs, it kind of made people forget about some of the stuff that happened during the 2015-2016 season. Kumbaya, everything's great, everybody gets along. 14 minutes and 27 seconds was his average ice time that year. And the belief was, all right, he's going to get better, he's going to get more ice time, things are going to be awesome for him. 2016-2017, 73 games played, 21 goals, 32 assists, 53 points. Plays an average of 17 minutes and 42 seconds a game. And then something strange happens. He gets traded to Montreal for Sergachev. There were draft picks involved as well. And it was an odd trade because Sergachev was seen as this really solid young offensive defenseman who was going to solve Montreal's offensive defenseman problem. And Drouin uh, was seen as coming off of a decent season, but there was some concern about whether or not he was that elite level player. And you get you got the feeling when they signed him that they believed he was going to be. So June 15th, 2017, before he's played a game for Montreal, he signs a six-year, $33 million contract. Now, for people wondering, there's no no-trade on that contract yet. There's a modified no-trade that kicks in in 2021. It expires in 2023. So it's a $5.5 million cap hit for four seasons for anybody who'd pick him up. Keep that in mind. 
Um, 2017-2018, his first year in Montreal, played 77 games, 13 goals, 33 assists, 46 points. He had 17-42 the year before in Tampa. He played 17 minutes and 36 seconds in Montreal. But while his numbers aren't great, the perception is, hey, it takes him a while, and, you know, Montreal's not Tampa scoring-wise, so just, you know, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. And the attempt was made to move him to center that had middling results, and he ends up playing the wing as well. And you get the feeling he never really got comfortable, so you can kind of forgive that year. The season we just had, 2018-2019, 81 games played, 18 goals, 35 assists, 53 points. He ties a career high in points. He sets a new career high in assists. He played 16 minutes and 56 seconds a game, a drop of about, well, a drop of, of 40 seconds per game from where he was the year before. Now, what's held onto by everybody right now is he was pointless in 23 of the last 26 games he played last year. And he had one goal over those last 26 games. So that's... That's the stat that's going to stand out, and I think that's part of the reason why in Montreal's training camp, he's getting a lot of um, critique. Because, as Mark Bergevin said today, there are other Montreal Canadiens that he feels he could point out haven't had a great camp and haven't had a great exhibition preseason, but everybody's asking him about Drouin. And he's saying, look, there's rumors being started by some guy in a basement in Toronto. I'm not in Toronto, so he's not talking about me. And I and I don't know who he's talking about. I don't I don't know who has been starting rumors in a basement in Toronto, because um, you know people say Steve Dangles in Toronto. He's not he, he he is, but he doesn't do all the rumors and gossip. And certainly I haven't seen him say anything about Drew or Montreal this summer. Um, so yeah, one goal over that span. But I will say this for Drew in the three games where he had a point out of those twenty six, Montreal won all three. So when Drew Amp performs. It, it definitely boosts Montreal's chances of winning the game. So I'm not just trying to throw some shade here. I'm trying to point out when Drouin plays well, it definitely seems to have that effect where the whole team plays well as well. Um, now, if we look back to where I think a lot of the criticism may come from with him, I think there's some carryover from November 2015. He requested a trade from the Tampa Bay Lightning due to what he he believed was an untenable situation. It was kept quiet. It came out in January. It came out in January, January 20th of 2016, uh, roughly two and a half weeks after being sent down to Syracuse, he refused to report to a game between Syracuse and the Toronto Marlies. He's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, he played 17 games with Syracuse, had 11 goals and two assists. His plus minus stats were ugly. I know plus minus doesn't matter. But his defensive numbers were poor. And it's something that you look at the defensive numbers for him. His advanced stats aren't bad. I'm not going to say they're bad. But some of the defensive numbers, eh. Anyways, so he got suspended and, and this held out there. And it was just this this ugly thing. March 8th, 2016, he reports to Syracuse. Everything's, all right, everything's fine. All right, we'll work it out over the summer is what he said. And then, of course, he got called up. And in the playoffs, he puts up 14 points in 17 games. And it kind of gets forgotten. But, it you know, there's a funny thing in hockey. So, Jordan Bennington just won the Stanley Cup. And there were a lot of people praising him because he refused to take a demotion to the East Coast Hockey League. But, if Jordan Bennington doesn't have that Stanley Cup run, and if Jordan Bennington played in the American Hockey League all year last year, it just would have been, why, why is he so much better than the other guys? Why can't he go to the East Coast League? He, that's that's terrible attitude. So when a player looks at their standing with the team and whether it's it's what line they're on, we're going through that with line A, or you know being demoted to the American Hockey League like in this situation, we'll look at that and go, spoiled, demanding, or good for him sticking to his guns. And it really depends on how it ends up. And with Drew, he's never really reached, again, that level that he was expected to as a number three overall pick. I think Drew is a good player. I think he's a useful middle six guy, meaning second, third line. I don't necessarily see him as a first line hockey player. Uh, he did win fastest skater at the skills competition at the 2015 All-Star Game. The kid can skate like crazy. Um, he's been healthy the last couple of years. 
with Montreal. But I don't think this is the right time to, to talk about whether or not Montreal is going to trade him. I, I don't know who takes that cap hit. I, and that's that's the thing too in this in this day and age we've got so many teams that are at near or over the cap that that a 5.5 million dollar cap it it's it's tough for most teams to swallow that and again he's a good player and Montreal a team that has struggled to score goals I don't know that now is the time to trade a guy who could score 60 plus points this year because when we talk about line a and, and what he could be. Obviously, Jonathan Drouin does not have the goal-scoring acumen of a Patrick Laine. But the potential is still there that Drouin gets to that 60-plus point mark um, and develops that consistency. You know, the reason I put up that he was held pointless in 23 or 26 games isn't just, a, oh, look how terrible he is. Look, he still tied his career high in points while not producing over the last quarter of the season. P produces 10 points in 26 games, or I should say points in 10 of 26 games, his points total is much higher. One of the three games where he scored points, he got four assists in. So he has that potential to score more than 60 points. Bergevin, I, I don't think is trying to move him. I think there's a lot of smoke about nothing, and I, I, I don't see any reason to, to not believe him today when he says these rumors I, I don't understand it and i don't see any reason not to believe him either when he says there's other members of the montreal canadians he's concerned with right now but jonathan drew because of where he was drafted because of how much money he made and because people will remember the i'm not going to the american league kind of thing and and they'll look at his numbers 194 points in 322 games only 60 goals he's only played 23 games in the playoffs uh, and had 14 points and it's not his fault that teams that he's on don't make the playoffs He's not that guy that you look at and go, well, it's him. It's all He's the Toby Reader of that team. You don't look at him and see that. But again, because of the other expectations, I think there will always be a, a, a brighter light shone upon him. Sergachev hasn't set the world on fire with Tampa. That said, Sergachev has shown he can score 40, 45 points from the blue line. And as much as we can talk about What's more important, you know, that top six forward or that top four defenseman and where Montreal's defense is at right now. Um, you, you can't overstate just how impressive it is for a defenseman to come in right away and be able to produce at a 40-point clip and do that while not playing big minutes. So, uh, again, I think he gets tied to that Sergachev trade. I think he gets looked at as he was a number three overall pick. And I, I think there's some people who need to just you know, lower expectations a little bit. And with Montreal, it's tough because the Montreal media is, is rough. Montreal fans can be pretty rough too. Um, there have been instances where, you know, players get booed off the ice who are Montreal Canadiens. And, and, and there are other teams that have fans that do that too. This isn't just a Montreal thing. It's just, it's Montreal's got very large fan base. So when it happens with Montreal, people notice but uh, I, I, I don't see him getting moved. I say that, and yet it could happen. Let me know what you guys think, and especially for Montreal fans, how do you feel about Drouin? Uh, do you see him as a 60-plus point guy? Um, and and do you think Mark Bergevin is going to hold on to him and just ride this out for at least another year and see where it goes? Or do you think, yeah, no, he's probably going to find his way out because... We've got these other players that have come in. You've got guys like Paling pushing for a job, and Kokkinemi's going to need some minutes. And all these guys are going to need minutes. And Kokkinemi's a guy that's been talked about in the preseason as well for not really producing the way that was expected of him. And to that I answer, he's a teenager, and give it time. Uh, but again, with, with media and sometimes with fan bases, that, that, that time, that attention span, isn't necessarily there. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.